The Scream Kings are in no way responsible for any encounters with the paranormal, extraterrestrial abductions, eldritch insanity, hauntings, hexes, curses, demonic possessions, cryptozoological sightings, or any loss of sleep from listening to this podcast. This is the Scream Kings podcast. I'm Max George. I'm NJ Gallegos. I'm Nathaniel Darkish. And this is some next level bath salt shit. No, it's just Black Friday. Excitement is in the podcast. Well, uh, today we have a very special treat. We are talking about a very uh, timely for this time of year (laughs) uh, film. I don't know if treat is the word I would use. but I would. We'll go ahead and use that. (laughs) You're just hating on it, so I can be the one champion of this movie. (laughs) Okay, you might be, NJ, and I'm sorry for that. It's fine. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, we're talking uh, Black Friday from 2021, directed by Casey Tebow, and uh, written by Andy Greskoviak. Hopefully I didn't butcher either of those names. You probably did, but it's okay. <laughs> At least you tried. And that's all you that are, matters. You are with consumption, Nathaniel. Do you want to give everyone a heads up of how you're feeling? Uh, yeah, uh, if my voice is just gone like halfway through this episode, don't be surprised. Uh, I was convinced for the last like two days that I have pneumonia, but I apparently don't. I just have some other fun respiratory thing. So yeah, I don't feel amazing, and uh, it's kind of losing. We already yes. figured it out. Exactly, but but yeah, you know, me losing my voice off and on all day while teaching has been fun, and now I get to do that on the podcast. And of course, between me uh, coughing uh, blood prettily into a lace handkerchief and then trying to hide it from the rest of you. <gasps> Is that uh-huh. what you were doing? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Yikes. It's classic. They do that in the ER all the time. It's always the lace handkerchief, too. Oh, of course. Or, it, you know, it, I, I hear that if you don't have a lace handkerchief handy, a doily is an acceptable substitute. A doily? Like a tea yeah. thing? Yes. Nice. But anyway, regardless of my, <laughs> my you know, illness... <laughs> Uh, which I love will... that we've already gotten sidetracked on the episode. It's great. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna go and be like, I day or diary. I learned what a doily was today. <laughs> yeah, and one of those little go, little dear crochet diary. Things. I learned what a tea bag is. <laughs> <laughs> we all know you know what that is. So the movie. Back to Black Friday. Our shoppers are going crazy. Whatever you do, don't let them gather. They're building something. At this point, we're just in their way. We're going to have to fight. I don't think this night can get any worse. (laughs) Does anybody else just think that's funny? I told you they never die. We have to make a run for it. Exactly. Black Friday is over! This movie came out in 2021. Do you guys know if it was um, shown in theaters at all a few years back? I had no recollection of this film. I am suspecting not, but I mean, maybe. I mean, does anybody really know anything that happened after 2020? Oh, that's a good point. There was a dark pallor that fell across the world. What was Um... that? (laughs) COVID! Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, no. It, no, that was it was Black Friday. Yeah, clearly. Clearly. The events the, the the documentary film Black Friday. So we are in fact talking about this movie. I feel like we are all over the place and that's okay. Hey, I blame the cold medicine. That's fair. I've been there. I need to get sick then. Hmm. Or just take cold medicine. I mean, Get that prescription strength stuff. Do you want to give us a little, like, rapid-fire synopsis about the film and 
kind of what it's all about other than Black Friday. Absolutely. So this film, this stunning cinematic masterpiece, Black Friday, follows a group of employees at a toy store during Black Friday having to deal with the hordes of customers and what I'd like to call meteor shit in a nice (laughs) callback to Stephen King that turns them into parasitic zombies. Are they zombies? Uh, we can we can get zombie to that later. adjacent. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I told you to give us a summary, and now I'm gonna nitpick your summary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty much it. And then Devin Sawa's in it. There you go. And then I guess all of the shoppers turn into a giant kaiju at the end for some reason. Yes. Yeah. What was with that? I, okay. Max has a lot of feelings. I will try and put them in my pocket for now. Yeah, you're going to save it for the back half of us discussing it, mostly. Uh-huh. I found the movie very entertaining, but not necessarily good. But let me start with, 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 with props where they're due. Uh, the practical effects for the creatures, pretty freaking great. You know I love me some good practical effects, and this actually delivered on that. Yeah, I think... We can kind of separate things here a little bit, right? The The movie itself, uh, maybe I didn't love it. I didn't enjoy it, perhaps, as maybe either of you, actually. But when it comes to the practical effects and kind of the idea and the premise, it's pretty fun. And I think the practical effects here really did a bang-up job, especially when it came to the faces of these zombie alien things. Uh, I was really impressed. Uh, NJ, you, I think, had a little note here about the eyes of the individuals. And I'm not sure what they did. Either they were white-eyed contacts or, you know, the classic yellow demon contacts. But the makeup surrounding the eyes of our zombies in this film really was pretty unsettling, I thought. Yeah, it, like sta- they like stared through you almost whenever they they caught the camera. Yeah, yeah, they they hit a little different than what I'm used to when it comes to a zombie film. Plus, I I love the like weird stab through the neck thing that that comes out of their mouths. That was pretty cool. No, 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 <laughs> no. I hated that. It was terrifying. Do ugh, you got me thinking about it. Blah! Didn't you like think it was kind of like. They they borrowed a little bit from Alien too, because the, oh, the for like, sure, and then the the like egg Wait, thingy kind of. I'm sorry, NJ. What was that noise? The noise. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, I blinked. Yes. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a sued by Disney because that's sorry. definitely Donald Duck. <laughs> no way. No. And, uh, no, but r- really, uh, that part for me, um, I hate parasites hate 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 any form of parasite and this just uh, made me feel things i don't ever want to feel again scare roused no not even scrows just scared real boner killer a big boner killer it was like it looked slimy but firm and it was almost webbed and it just projectiled out of their mouth like that. <laughs> but then it had like and... a little claw thing that would like pop out <sighs> if it attached to their face. Oh, I did not oh, like yeah. it one bit. I mean, I don't want to like, you know, go on a date with someone who does that. But like, it seemed pretty cool as far as practical effects go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's kind of like... um God, is it Scorpion from Mortal Kombat? Where it's like, come over here. Get over here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That was hot. Okay. (laughs) While we're talking about hot individuals, uh, this film gave us two two beautiful things to look at. NJ, do you not agree? Oh, do I? Do I agree? (laughs) We got Devin Sawa who I really didn't know about until this film, and then I looked back at his filmography, 
And you're like, yeah. oh, it's it's young Casper when he's human yeah. again. Yeah, right? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't realize who Devin Sawa was? No, until <gasps> I looked it up. Oh my gosh. So, I've always had a little bit of a crush on him. Even, you know, the Casper reveal. I was like, oh, Casper, like, I hey. mean, who didn't? Right. You're like, oh, you're a friendly ghost, I hear. <laughs> Tell me oh, more. <laughs> oh, come on over here, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> and then Final Destination. I mean, come on. Oh, come that's on. fair. He is in Final Destination. Idle Hands. I mean, there's a lot of really good ones he's in. But. Tell us to... your story. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, I'm literally still floating on air from this. So for you listeners, I was tweeting about um, how insanely hot Devin Sawa was. And then because I'm a psychopath, I tagged him and I said, Devin Sawa, lesbians think you're hot. And then he commented back with a heart. So we're like, we're pretty much in love. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm. I haven't been writing my name and then Sawa, you know, but it, it's fine. <laughs> NJ Sawa. NJ, NJ, NJ Sawa. <laughs> Sawa. I love it. Um, We've had that happen maybe twice in the existence of this podcast, and you come on the show for two-day stint and you're already getting actors. The lesbian magic. The lesbian magic. We're, we're witchy. We're witchy type. That's true. Um, the other beautiful man in this film is, of course, the one, the only, Bruce Campbell. But this is Daddy Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and no one can say it other than Daddy Bruce. If you don't say it like that, I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> that includes you, Nathaniel. Yeah, I'm not going to even attempt that. <laughs> Um, I have some feelings about Bruce, but all I gotta say is he was rocking that mustache and that bow tie. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> he kind of looked like a neurologist to me. Yeah, I get that. Oh boy. You didn't know you had a neurologist thing until just then. I like somebody oh. that gives good head. Boom! <laughs> Fun fact, I have a neurology degree, so here we are. Do you? Oh. We are spiraling again. Yeah, that sounds about right for this. I will highlight one other actor who I, I thought did a, a solid job. Um, so Ivana Baccaro, she played the, the role of Marnie. I thought that she was uh, one of the better characters, more fleshed out than uh, than most of the others, I will say. And, uh, yeah, she was the little girl in Pan's Labyrinth, and so it's kind of cool to see her, you know, in a... All, all, all grown up. Remind me, she was kind of the main protagonist female character, correct? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I, some of the acting I thought was very well done. Others I wasn't a huge fan of, but them in particular, I think she carried the film in a lot of capacity. Yeah, yeah, like... Devin Sawa, you know, just spent the whole time being attractive, right? Bruce Campbell was just being Bruce Campbell, which, I mean, I'm always here for. Though though a little less kick-butt Bruce Campbell and more just, like, kind of Henri manager type, which he did, he did a great job with. But yeah, she was definitely kind of like the heart and soul of the movie. Do you think that uh, her and Devin Sawa got together afterward? Their characters? They definitely saw each other naked. I don't know. I think she was kind of over it after his little meltdown. Yeah, I think you're right. Because, yeah, that, that, that's about the height of the drama is, you know, like, you know, they, they are they're always flirting with each other. They always, you know, like, oh, yeah, we made out that one time or whatever. But then, you know, when he actually tries to go like, yeah, we have a relationship, she's like, yeah, you're like a dad and stuff. Like, you're just kind of the guy I flirt with at work to make make me get through the day. I mean, well, I would flirt with that that if it got me through the work day. Facts. But is what it is. So which coworker were you? Which one would you be? Oh, I was definitely Brian, the sassy gay like leader of the bunch. Not even a leader who thinks he's the leader. Ugh, I loved him. 
the corporate <laughs> shell. I mean, there's that, sure. <laughs> but just, You know, like, Max, I have worked with you, and that is not remotely who you are. Um, Nathaniel, we haven't worked together for years. I'm a different person. You guys used to work together? We did. We, we worked together in a watch shop during high school. And also at a, a hotel in the middle of the night. Yep. Oh. We're going to delve into that later. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think I would be him, but I wanted to be him. Is that fair enough? I guess. Yeah, I think that's fair. In all honesty, I'd probably be the older lady who died fairly quickly on. <laughs> um, I always want to believe that in the, the stories of yore, I'd be the cool, heroic person, but I'd be the guy in King's Landing baking bread who gets pissed when his bakery is burned down, you know? I'm not going too far. You're still important. You have to bake the bread. True. True. What about you guys? I'd be Chris, the guy that washes his hands a lot. Really? I hate to say it, but I'm like a massive germaphobe ever since COVID. Ah, uh, that's okay. And like the ER. Ugh. I would I would be the stuffed bear that gets kicked around Dower Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Which was weirdly voiced by Seth Green. You would be Dower Dennis. (laughs) I need a colonoscopy. I'm here. (laughs) At least, at least if I ever, if I'm ever back in retail again, that's about where I'm at. Oh, I feel that energy. That's a good point. But it's okay. I have a career in education, and I'm not that there. Oh goodness. Um. While we're on this topic, I do think that this film did a really fun job of kind of bringing these kind of work archetypes together pretty well. You know, you, you did have the germaphobe, you did have the guy who was too cool, um, the Brian, kind of the manager who takes everything so seriously, the employee of the month, the crush, like all of these very fun tropes that we all experience in our life, but to see them in this kind of a scenario and in this situation was just pretty fun, I thought. And mm-hmm. it, it was fun watching the film and trying to think who's going to die first, who's going to make it out alive, other than, of course, the whole protagonist syndrome. But which work archetype is going to survive? No, I, I, I agree, because I think it's it's kind of playing off of that very, like, you're stuck in a job you don't like, and so you just start coming up with scenarios like, oh, would we survive this? I was very surprised that Archie didn't last longer, but he was being heroic, I guess, was the problem. Yep. That would not be me. Yeah, he was definitely the, the like, actually cool person who doesn't act cool. He's just, is, in fact, a cool person. Yeah. I miss him. R.I.P. Archie. Thanks for doing what you did. <laughs> What else did you guys like about the film? I I actually laughed out loud at some of the quotes. Um, I mean, the bath, the next level bath salt shit got me pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, the what was this? Chris's not Chris. Devin Sawa's daughter. We had Thanksgiving breakfast. Talk about <laughs> sad. I mean, like that <laughs> resonated with me. <laughs> it's. It, Whenever I did um, my residency, you know, you you typically have to work holidays and they would give you this like little tin of like fried turkey and like a cranberry like plop of crap and then like cold mashed potatoes. And that's what it reminded me of. Yum. I mean, I ate it, but yeah, that and then um, whenever he said, I guarantee that was some soccer mom high on the thrill of being a douche. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much any of the, like, crap talking of, of customers made me laugh, because I'm like, yeah, that, that is just how it is. Consumers, don't be dumb. Yeah, don't be that person. Let's finally go into things we maybe didn't like about the film. So, I mean, it's it was kind of a very basic monster story. Like, there wasn't that much that really made it stand out. I don't know. Just, it, it felt like, you know a zillion zombie movies and or other type movies like that, you know, kind of remind me of mini zombie movies or Splinter or, I don't know, like 
80 other movies that I've seen that maybe were a little bit more original than it. Yeah, at first I thought the whole idea, you know, the opening scene where we see this, like, slimy egg sack and it explodes and it, it was giving kind of a different twist. And I was pretty excited about that. I I don't love zombie films. Uh, NJ, sorry if you like zombies. It's fine. Nathaniel and I are kind of done with the whole zombie thing. And so seeing this kind of twist and this variation, I was pretty excited for it when the, the film started. And then it quickly became very apparent that it was just, you know, zombies, but with a twist. And I was just, I, I don't know. I thought it was a cool idea that they really didn't utilize that well. Did they ever really talk about like what the like goal was? Were they just going to take over the world? Or we we really don't know. It seems like that seems like it, it's something like that. Since you know we see a bunch of them in the horizon once they are trying to escape, and it seems like it, they've infected like every store. But yeah, I guess world conquest and I guess becoming a giant mega entity. I just feel like they could have moved a little bit faster, too, when, whenever they got, like, massive, you know? Like, you're just like, okay, I'm gonna just catch on fire now. Yeah, they, they seemed way less effective as, as big kaijus. Right. And also, like, yeah, the, the kaijus were much larger than the amount of mass that they absorbed, right? Like, that, that just seemed bizarre to me that they're, like, that much larger, and for some reason just have a bunch of, like, faces on the side. No no real reason. It just kind of looked weird, I guess. And why? 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 Like, I, I did not understand the whole kaiju moment. I love kaiju. Don't get me wrong. I'm coming into my kaiju renaissance. This just felt unnecessary and very disjointed. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it was kind of a relief seeing them turn into kaiju after it really just looked like a giant phallic beacon in the middle of the store for, like, half the movie. Pulsating. Pink. But, but they were just so much more effective when they were by themselves, you know? Yeah. So I just... That was a little disappointing. It It just didn't make sense. None of the whatever they were i was kind of getting oh my gosh why can't i think of the game that was just recently turned into a uh, tv show last of us last of us yeah kind of this fun idea of like hive mind but make it aliens and they reproduce by this terrifying <laughs> spurter thing <laughs> all of that all of that is really fun and it just went what it it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, along those lines, also, like, they were really effective for the first, like, third of the movie. And then the middle third, they were just like, we locked a door, and now we're totally fine. And it was kind of boring, that whole middle section, which definitely felt more like a, you know, kind of weak zombie movie than a, uh, you know, any real threat. It just seems like, oh, then they all just started forming a giant pulsating dick in the middle of the store. Yeah, I'll be honest, I forgot most of the middle of the movie because um, I think I went and got a snack and like... And got lost in Devon Sawa's eyes. You know, I stalked Devon Sawa on Twitter for a little while and then came back. I I don't think you're the only one. Um, (laughs) the, The... They did this weird thing that I'm kind of getting over when it comes to horror movies a little bit, where they slowed down the intensity of the film so that they could give us some character background. And it just... Time and place. I sometimes don't love it in shows and movies, whatever it is, where there's this crazy disaster, this huge threat, this traumatic moment... And the characters are like, okay, let's talk about our holiday bonuses. (laughs) Like, (laughs) not the time or place. I understand that it was kind of a dark comedy here. I get that. But I think it's a trope that's starting to lose its luster for me a little bit. I just want realism. And 
again, I know this was a, more of the comedic spin, but the whole bonus thing and the whole corporate is this terrible entity kind of joke. I don't know. It just didn't mesh with the tone of the film for me. You know what I think it is? Um, in Gremlins, whenever they have that conversation when she's like, this is why I hate Christmas. And it's like kind of that monologue, but like it's very effective in that movie. I mm-hmm. think that like they try to recreate that sometimes. Yeah, yes. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah, I thought of that scene specifically while watching this. Yeah, me too. I didn't. I was just huffing and puffing. I just well, so upset. Well, well, yeah. Like I just I'm... need to be heard. <laughs> Sorry. No. Well, to 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 add on to your point, Max, I I think you're you're dead on there because I think the difference is that the the conversation that they were having was about something very meaningless. Like it it would have made a lot more sense if the monsters came or were in some way connected to corporate, right? If 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 corporate is the hell of their existence and they're going to complain about how corporate is treating them and stuff the whole time, then corporate should be tied to the monstrosity, right? But it's it's trying to play with like too many themes at once. You you can't have a, a movie talking about how corporate sucks when you're having people get killed by this other thing. It, it either needs to be a metaphor or it needs to be the, you know, or it needs to all be connected to that theme, but it it shouldn't try to do both things at the same time. Otherwise, it just comes across as ham-fisted. Yeah, that's a good point and a good way to kind of verbalize it. it. And I think that, in part, is a big issue I had with the film. In the, They felt like they were trying to do three different things all at once. They wanted the zombies, but also they're aliens, but also corporate America sucks, and also being a divorced dad is tough it it just uh it was pulling me all over the place not in a good way no no Mm. typically i like it a little rougher but not for this film (laughs) you you like the little like mouth thingy do you (laughs) 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 oh my gosh so what else did we not particularly love about the film I think Nathaniel got like PTSD. So. Yeah, it's true. Was brought on by this. Oh my God, you're probably right. You could probably sue them. Yeah, there we go. Let's yeah, make it... some money. Anyone who's a lawyer, give us a call. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just I. You know, I only had to work a handful of Black Fridays over my life, but that was too many. And uh, this definitely brought me firmly back into that it was a little too real i don't know it, it if, if you're gonna go with comedy you have to exaggerate and or or do like some sort of understated thing it was just accurate like i don't know it just up until you know obviously people started foaming at the mouth well eh, even then um <laughs> but but yeah like just a lot of the the stuff that we saw them go through wasn't funny to me because i'm just like no that's just a customer interaction like it didn't feel anything besides just how it actually is the true horror is corporate america and consumerism by black friday so where remind me where did you work on black friday that this is impacted um so i have worked at a walmart on black friday oh god Yes, and then also at a Radio Shack. Which was worse? Um, Radio Shack. Really? When did you, when did you work at Radio Shack? What? Who are you? That was my first year of college. Oh, I didn't know you in your first year of college. I mean, I did, but you went to a different college. Yes. <laughs> so... Um. Yeah, no, it well, it was worse because I uh, had the, okay, now we're going to sell $10,000 worth of phones today and cell phones, cell phones, cell phones all day. And, like, I can deal with hordes of, of crazy people at Walmart because it was just like, I don't know, ring people up. But and as opposed to, 
try to push these specific kinds of items on people all morning. Mm. So you had to like, yeah, you had to be like a salesman at Radio Shack, whereas Walmart, you're just like a automaton. Is that the right word? I was going to go with drone, but yeah, that works. You're like a zombie. There we go. Zombie, zombie. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. I don't care. That was beautiful. Thank you. It You're going to get than... sued by the cranberries. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to pay royalties now. I apologize. Uh, you sounded just like Miley Cyrus. It was indistinguishable. <laughs> oh, <yes! laughs> um, so I have two soapboxes that I would like to stand upon, if you guys will permit me. Yes. I guess. Um, which one do you want? Soapbox? Wow, soapbox. <laughs> soapbox one or soapbox two? Soapbox one. Soapbox one. Um, I love Bruce Campbell. We all love Bruce Campbell. Yes. Yeah. I hated him in this film. Well, I think you're supposed to. Um, yeah, sure, but not not because of the character. I hated bruce campbell just being ash in another film i kind of had this light bulb moment where bruce campbell is great but why is he great because he's ash just because he's ash does not give him a free pass to be this awesome actor in everything he touches so do you think he was like he's phoning it in a little bit yeah yeah big time i think he He's kind of relying on his laurels a little bit of, oh, well, I'm Ash from Evil Dead, so as long as I give that energy, then I get my paycheck and I'm done. And I, I, I just... It kind of put a real bad taste in my mouth for this film. It's, it kind of gave me Nicolas Cage. Ooh. I'm going to get skewered on a pole in the fields of... Romania from Vlad the Impaler, but I said it. I said it. So I I see where you're coming from on this, and and I think that if if Bruce Campbell has any flaws, it is that that too many of his characters are are Ash at different volumes. I will say there was a little bit more to it in this one that I thought was kind of interesting, but I think as a whole there were like like one or two scenes that he really like put some some you know, oomph behind, and besides that, he was just basically, yeah, like a, a watered-down version of Ash. So I'm going to ask, do you guys think that he is typecast, or do you think that he just delivers similar performances? I think he's definitely typecast, especially, like, it seems like, you know, he is a relatively, you know, less expensive, you know, kind of B-movie actor, sure. right? Like, you know, and, and so I think you know, they're like, hey, there's name recognition um, with him. But yeah, he, he I, I think he just kind of gets plugged into that s- sort of character over and over and over again. And they probably tell him, like, oh, just be like Ash. So I, I think, like, like, I have seen him in a couple of other things. And of course, none of the specific names are coming to mind now. But where, where he did have a, a little bit more subtlety, a little bit more nuance. Yeah, most movies I've seen him in, he, he is just ash at like i said different volumes so but almost all those are b movies yeah i mean okay you hate nicholas cage what's the difference because i think nicholas cage is also typed cast substantially nicholas cage doesn't know how humans behave okay but why i mean I also don't like Nicolas Cage, but my beef with him is because he's just Nicolas Cage, but the he wears a different costume when he is acting. I can see that. So what makes Bruce Campbell any different? Bruce Campbell actually acts like a human being. Yes, like kind of an a-hole, but, you know, Nicolas Cage just acts like someone who has just heard of the concept of humans for the first time and is playing what he thinks that is so i don't know it just it one of them is a kind of person that i have interacted with and i can go okay he's doing that in different levels the other one is have you not ever had a conversation with other people this isn't how conversations work see i didn't know you guys hated nicholas cage okay (laughs) yeah 
okay. quite a bit. I mean, all right. Yeah. I mean, I don't love him or anything, but. Okay, I'm part of his fan club, guys. It's not a big deal, but like, I don't want to just make it a thing. <laughs> you do have a, a, a picture of Nicolas Cage screaming, the bees, the bees, uh, tattooed across your uh, midriff. I might. I, I just want him to find my national treasure. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> that is the line. <laughs> yeah, I think you, Nathaniel, like Bruce Campbell more than you like Nicolas Cage, so you're giving him a pass. And that's all I'll say. Well, yeah, he was Ash. No, yeah, I, I, I love Ash. I love Evil Dead. But I had a moment today with my little tablet and thought, oh my god, Bruce Campbell, you're not better than Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and that made me sad. He can grow a better mustache than Nicolas Cage. That is very true. Very true. So he wins. I end. Just, just watch some Ash vs. Evil Dead and, and you'll fall in love with him again. See, but I, again, like Ash always plays the chauvinistic, toxic, masculine character, and it's kind of starting to disgust me a little bit. I mean, there's a point where it's kind of comically funny, sure, but if you're doing that for every role that you're doing, I, it's kind of what you expect, and it kind of becomes nauseating. That's fair. Anyway, that is... Soapbox number two, one, I can't remember. I think we're on one. <laughs> okay. All right, let's hear the second one. Okay, this one's much quicker. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce Campbell. If you're listening, I love you, and I want to be a deadite. Um, second one, uh, Chris is a dick. Oh, yeah. And when he was kind of lashing out against Devin, Ken, for being... Uh, a partial custody dad i lit up and was fuming i think he said something to the effect of well i'm more your kid because you see me more basically as a partial custody father no one can understand the pain it is to not have your kids full access on the holidays so if anyone listening thinks that your part-time dad isn't a real dad, you can go straight to hell. Do not get me started. So Chris, suck it. That's fair. Yeah, it, I think that was kind of the horror that they should have tapped into a little bit. Ken not seeing his kids and wanting to see his kids and being trapped in this like crazy situation dig into that a little bit let us see some of that humanity rather than just make a giant kaiju of consumers well yeah then you would actually like get a little bit more invested in the characters you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah this definitely kind of leaves you with you know maybe liking one or two of the characters and kind of thinking the rest of them are terrible and not really cheering for them and, and you're supposed to at least kind of like all of them i think i was just obsessed with Devin. i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> everything else was just a blur everything i remember nothing <laughs> <laughs> and those are my two soapboxes so someone else needs to talk because i feel like i have taken over the podcast now you're welcome the max george podcast do, ba, do, do. um is, is there any other stuff we want to talk about uh or should we just move on to our scores ratings let's go i want to know before we go there real quick um, NJ, you really enjoyed the film, probably more than Nathaniel and I did. Why? What was it that really kind of tickled your pickle, if I use my <laughs> grandma's? Uh... Well, I think we know the number one pickle tickler <laughs> of the entire movie, and I don't think we need to go into it anymore because my wife might divorce me if I talk about Devin Sawa again at the dinner table. <laughs> Okay, but other than that pickle tickler. <laughs> I I don't I guess I just I'm I'm very brainless when I watch stuff. Like that's why I, I really like reality TV. I just like to shut my mind off and just go. So like little one liners and stuff that they, they, they get me. I love that shit. So I'm not saying it's necessarily a good movie, but I had a sure. good time. 
All right, so let's move on to the, to our ratings. Uh, I can I can go first. Uh, screams wise, uh, I gave it a four, mostly just for the, the 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 goopy alien tentacle things that come out of their mouths. I would agree. I give it a four as well. Um, I found the zombie faces when they were the close up to be pretty freaky. Yeah, I, I gave it a three outside of the <laughs> and the zombie faces. I I was never like distressed or scared or had any sort of feeling of like yeah a three <laughs> but but the the white sticky hands that come out of their mouths seem to upset you really really powerfully that's true yeah but they're they're nothing to lose sleep over i hope uh, a and I, I hope it happens challenge accepted i'm gonna find a way to make one and sneak into your house so let's let's move on to crowns. I'm gonna give mine. I'm gonna give it a six just because of the mindless entertainment and Devin Sawa. I'll I'll give it a five for those same reasons. I'm notorious for not loving B horror. I find it that the corny takes me out of the experience. And I was really excited for this film in the beginning, but then it started to get corny, and it got real corny. And the script was not the best, and the acting was not great. I'm talking to you, Anita, employee of the month. Sorry, Celeste, Oliva. Yeah, she was kind of uh, a low point. I don't know. I, I struggle with B-films. Nathaniel, you know this. NJ, you will get to know this. Not my favorite! That's okay. This is America, and you're entitled to your opinion. Thank you. You're welcome. Normally, Nathaniel says, I uh, can see your point, but you're wrong. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> I am nothing if not diplomatic, so. <laughs> so, do you guys want to answer some zombie survival questions? My body is ready. Excellent. If you had to fight parasitic zombies at your workplace, what is your weapon of choice and why? I work from home, but I also go into a research clinic. Can I choose both or one? You can choose both. So then my vote <clears throat> at home would be I have a pretty awesome target bow. My entire family shoot bow and arrows. So I would use that to fight the zombies. Like Daryl. Okay, that's hot. And then at work, I work in pharmaceutical research, so I would take some of our non-FDA medication <laughs> and poison the zombies with who knows what. Ooh. Okay. All right. What about you, Nathaniel? Um, well, I, I have the uh, luxury of, one, having plenty of teenagers to throw at the parasitic zombies. So, so that could be a, a good route as I make my way uh, to another part of the building because we're in a uh, tech college. So I could get downstairs, get some, some knives from the culinary people. I could go get some welding equipment. I could get automotive repair equipment. I don't know. There's, there's lots of things at my disposal. It would be... Uh, kind of a smorgasbord of just whatever I felt like. So you would probably do very well. Yes. All right. So my practical weapon would be like unhooking an IV pole from the bed and just like walloping them. Ooh, I've done that in uh, Silent Hill. Yeah. See, I think it would work well. My, if I was going to be in a comedic zombie movie... I would pick the defibrillator, but I think it would probably take too long. And I don't know if you can defibrillate a zombie, so maybe that's a really bad choice. But you know what? You never know till you try. Well, it brings them back to life, and then you kill them. Oh. Maybe I should write this down. <laughs> anyway. If you had to fight the zombies... More you know. <laughs> I, I'm just writing it in my idea book. It's fine. Um, okay. If you had to fight zombies with one of your favorite Christmas gifts from childhood, what would it okay. be? Hell yeah. A shotgun. Oh, wow. Is that a real Christmas gift you got? Yes. What? Who are you? Have you met my father? He goes hunting like 
every day. Okay, that's fair. But remember, I thought your father was imaginary for a good several years. So I forget about his existence. Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah, easy. Shotgun. That's effective. Very effective. Um, when I was about nine, I sat on Santa Claus's lap and desperately asked for the Power Ranger Ultra Super Deluxe Megazord. And my parents pulled a Christmas story and Christmas came and I did not receive the Ultra Super Deluxe Megazord. And I was very sad and cried a little bit in the bathroom, but no one saw me because I'm a big boy. <laughs> and I came out and oh looks like we missed a present it was under the couch and it was the ultra super deluxe megazord um i would use that not because it would do any damage but i would like to die with that in my hands i like that that's good and it has really two cool plastic zeo swords that i'd use to like try and stab the eyes of the zombies you might be able to though i mean you might like be able to take out, like, one zombie. Yeah, but it would be great. I'd be a Power Ranger. That's all I want. I would pick, um, whenever I, th- I think I was either five or six, it was right when my parents got divorced, because that's 100% why I got this gift, because they felt bad. It was a Super Nintendo with um, Super Mario World and Mario Paint, and I would wrap the controller around the Super Nintendo and use it like a ball and chain and just... Hell yeah. And lastly, what trait do you possess that would be advantageous in a zombie apocalypse? The fact that I've read every zombie survival book out there, so I would probably know all of the ways. That's fair. I am, I have a lot of endurance, so as long as they're not like fast, fast zombies... I think that I could probably get away. And cardio. Yeah, cardio. Double tap. Double tap. Um, I speak Spanish, so maybe I could interpret the Latino zombies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little silly. <laughs> what is zombie in Spanish? Uh, zombie. Oh, well, fuck. Yeah, less exciting than yeah. you want it to be. Never mind. <laughs> that's like it's like when Duolingo just asks me like whatever the word is, and I'm like, what? And then I get it wrong, and it was the word, and I'm just like, ugh, like zombie. <laughs> oh, guys, I don't know. How about you pick for me? I don't think my sass or my wit would be beneficial at all, other than maybe keeping morale up in a fun way. Well, no. Okay, so what if it's demonic zombies, and then all of your occult knowledge could be the, like, antidote? Demombies, if you will. I would just bind them to my soul via, you know, the Lesser Cave Solomon. Um, I am pretty thin, I know that sounds like a humble brag, and it's not, but I'm going to use that because they'd look at me and be like, whoa, he's just bones in a tummy. Let's go on to somebody else. There we go. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Plus, you could squeeze into to windows and stuff. Eh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like you have a choice. I'm just going to stay at home. Yeah, I'm sorry, right. zombies. My mom said I can't come out to play today. <laughs> My mom doesn't want me to get wet. <laughs> and definitely not goopy. <laughs> oh, yucky. All right. Let's throw NJ another awesome, awesome, terrifying B reel, Nathaniel. Do you want to play a game? Yeah. Man, this 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 raspy voice is is uh working for me it's hot i told Uh, you well thank you you're welcome um today uh we have a holiday horror themed uh or or should i say horrible holidays be real game because that's how i roll so as usual i've got three films that i'm going to uh read off some information for one of them i made up the other two are 100 percent real our first film is The Killing Tree from 2022. Deck the halls with blood. 
On Christmas Eve, a widow casts a spell to resurrect her executed husband. However, when the spell goes wrong, the husband is brought back as an evil Christmas tree and is hell-bent on getting revenge on the one who caused his execution. Overall score, 3.3 out of 10 on IMDb. And uh, a review gave it a 5 out of 10 and said, Imagine if Zombievers were a Christmas tree. (laughs) The next one. The Mean One from 2022. Slashing through the snow. In a sleepy mountain town, Cindy's parents are murdered and her uh, Christmas identity, or sorry, and her Christmas is stolen by a bloodthirsty green figure in a red Santa suit. Yes, this is definitely a Grinch parody. Is uh, overall, sc- is the dog in it? Um, actually, I am in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, "What is he even talking about?" I was like, "Oh yeah, his name's Max." <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. This is not the first time it's happened. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I can't reveal that information. It might might give too many things away. Okay, got it. Overall score, 3.7 out of 10. And the review gave it a 10 out of 10 and said, Hallmark plus horror equals oh, the places you'll go. Or is is it this last film? Oh, little he- town of Deathlehem from 2022 no 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 (laughs) hark the herald angels scream to prepare the site for the antichrist to be born on christmas cultists begin to stack up bodies of their neighbors around a small town's yearly christmas nativity display (laughs) overall score 3.4 out of 10 the review gave it a 9 out of 10 and said a horror movie that remembers the true meaning of christmas (laughs) <laughs> okay. So, is it the killing tree with the wonderful tagline of deck the halls with blood, the mean one with slashing through the snow, or O oh, little town of Bethlehem, park the herald angels scream? I really want the tree one to be real. So, I'm not going to say that one. Bethlehem sounds fucking metal as hell. So, I'm going to go with the mean one. <gasps> okay, I, what do you Yeah, what do you think, Max? So, well, reveal the answers because I unfortunately am very familiar with horror uh <laughs> Christmas films. The actual uh real movies are The Killing Tree and The Mean One. Yeah. I made up Little Town of Bethlehem. Okay, you need to write that right now. <laughs> because I want it. Um, that is brilliant, Nathaniel. Yeah, like you I need loved... to do that. Uh, uh, so good. I've actually seen the trailer for the Mean One multiple times in theaters and on the YouTube. Yeah, it it is a treat. Is it just like a Grinch like knockoff or not? Yeah, not, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like 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 they can't say Grinch, so they just refer to him as the Mean One. But it's definitely the Grinch. It's actually played by the dude who's Art the Clown in Terrifier. Oh, okay. All right. And apparently it's a worthy of a 10 out of 10, according to that one reviewer on IMDb. All right. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for it. But let's be real. We all really just want to watch The Killing Tree, because if it's like Zombievers uh, as a Christmas tree. Maybe we can. true. Maybe we should do it. Yeah. I want to see Deathlehem yeah. so bad. I mean, it actually does sound pretty rad. I think you need to do it. <laughs> you write, I'll direct, and Jay, you'll star. How about that? <laughs> Daddy always said I'd be in lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, you're fired. We'll find someone new. <laughs> Fine. And you know what's awful? I can't even sleep my way to the top on this one. <laughs> nope. Sucks. How are you guys staying spooky? Um, I am doing something that Nathaniel has waited all of his 33 years for me to do. Yes. And that is play Resident Evil. It is the fourth game. They remastered it. It's up for game of the year. And... It was on sale for Black Friday, and one thing led to another, and here we are. Here we are. I'm playing it. 
I am enjoying it. I'm not loving it quite yet, Nathaniel. But it is a shooting game, and if there are not swords and magic, typically I'm not as interested. So, could be my own fault. It's it's just the, the right level of an unhinged that I think you'll enjoy where it goes. Yeah, I, I think that's another problem, is it, it feels a little slow right now. I'm in chapter 3 out of 16, and not a lot has happened, um, which is okay. You know, slow burn. Love that. But I just want it to kind of get to where it needs to go. Yeah, you, you, there are some truly bananas monsters around the corner. And, and uh, lots of weird guys in culty outfits and running around a castle. So you're, you're in for some, some magical treats. That I love. The other thing is, um, my fiancé and I went and saw Thanksgiving over the last few days and if you guys want to watch a very good holiday that's not christmas horror movie go see that it was a riot they did a phenomenal job all right so it was worth it huh okay um yeah i'd give it like an eight out of ten dang it's it doesn't reinvent the wheel at all but it is a slasher film that i imagine will have multiple sequels to follow interesting very interesting, especially because I generally hate Eli Roth's stuff, but maybe maybe this will be the exception. Yeah, I mean, again, doesn't change anything in the genre, but we left the film thinking that was a ton of fun. Uh, NJ, how are you staying spooky? Well, my family, uh, my in-laws are here for Thanksgiving, and my father-in-law is a big horror movie freak. His favorite movie is Leprechaun, if that tells you about his tastes. And I Freak got to, is the right word. Yeah, yeah. And I got to introduce him to Critters because he'd never seen Critters before. And he loved it. Hmm. Yeah. I think mostly because, you know, when they're captioning, when the, the Krites are talking, one of them says fuck. I think that that was really the biggest thing that he enjoyed. I also enjoyed it. And then as far as books, I'm currently reading The Parasite by Ramsey Campbell. Kind of of some research for a quiet horror call I saw recently. So trying to brush up on the skills, you know. Yeah, I've read a little bit of Ramsey Campbell in the past. And I I liked his stuff, but wasn't like smitten with it. So uh, you'll have to let me know how that one turns out. Will do. I'm I'm probably about 50% of the way. I mean, it's good but i don't know if i would be smitten just yet unless some stuff really goes off the rails well i too am staying spooky um mostly i've been uh just listening to uh, a bunch of audiobooks lately and uh just listened to one uh it's the second in a series it's, uh called Be- uh, becoming the bogeyman uh which is Written by uh, Richard Chismar, um, and it's uh, it's pretty good. So the it the both both of the books are written as though they are true crime, uh, and so like Richard Chismar is the main character as well as the author. And so yeah, he kind of like made a, a semi autobiographical version of his life where he had a serial killer in his hometown, and you know him kind of investigating that and. You know, tying it into some of his real life stuff because he's like the uh, main guy at uh, Cemetery Dance magazine, and he's done some stuff with, like Stephen King, and and just you know, kind of a, a pretty big name in the horror writing world. But he, yeah, did uh, the first book is um, Chasing the Boogeyman, which I really liked, and Becoming the Boogeyman was uh, similarly good. So um, definitely worth a pick, uh, a pick up, especially if you enjoy a fictional story with uh some some real uh solid true crime vibes i um i have i have uh chasing the boogeyman on my list um he wrote have you read the wendy's button box book yes i have he wrote those with stephen king didn't he Yes. Um, so the first and third ones are with stephen king he wrote the second one on his own but yeah i really liked those books um i like the way he writes 
So yeah, I'll, I'll need to get to this one next. Yeah, I I really dug it. Um, both both of the Boogeyman books were were a lot of fun and had some some cool, interesting twists and turns that I thought were uh, definitely worthwhile. Um, the only other thing that you know I've kind of been doing lately, other than playing Resident Evil Four myself because I love that game so much and can't stop playing it, is uh, I also read through uh, a lot of these uh, Amazon original um, like shorts that they did right around Halloween. There, there's one called The Pram by Joe Hill. There is Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix. It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mailerman. In Bloom by Paul Tremblay. And Best of Luck by Jason Mott. And uh, Big Bad by Chandler Baker. Uh, and all of those were fun. And they were all like free with having a Prime subscription. So uh, definitely some fun, you know, pretty quick. Uh, each one is like 50, 60 pages. Just a bunch of fun little, like, novelettes that are a, a good time. Especially, I, I thought Joe Hill and Grady Hendrix's were especially worthwhile. I have those also on my to-read to list. I love Grady Hendrix. He, his stuff makes me die laughing almost every single time. At least a couple times. He's been on the show a few times, <gasps> and we're trying to get him back. Oh my god, so, so I can fangirl him? Do him. Oh, I fangirled hard, so he will be right at home. Okay, good. Yeah, he Grady is a freaking delight. I will make you jealous by sending you a picture of me with him later. Yeah, you're gonna cuss, so get ready. <laughs> that curses. <laughs> ah! Yeah, yeah. The first Stoker kind I went to, we we hung out a decent amount. So he's he's the freaking best. All right, cool. cool. Just rub it in. Outside of that, though, friends. I hope you all stay spooky and enjoy Thanksgiving if you celebrate. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.